Hello. Before us, we have a reading comprehension. So we have a passage, and based on the passage, we have to answer a certain number of questions. For example, this is a short passage, a really short passage, and there are a couple of questions that follow this. So let us try to answer this as quickly as possible. First of all, we begin reading the passage. We gave a quick initial read. So in order to gauge all the metadata about the passage and what is the central idea of the passage. Let us try to identify those first. Consider this rule of thumb. The more that patriotism is invoked by a country's political elites, that the less healthy its political culture will be. From McCarthyism in the US to the Chinese Cultural Revolution, the imperative to love one's country has often been used as a pretext for persecution and submission. And in post-Brexit pandemic Britain, we have developed our own grammar of patriotic intimidation. The conservative government is well positioned to play this game. It is already high on the fumes of Brexit, which carried the Tories to a majority that would allow them to vanquish Europe, take back, con take back control and get the job done. The vote leave veterans in number 10 are already aware of how well the language of treachery and sabotage can turn a section of the public against its own judiciary and even elected representatives. The kind of war talk that helped secure Brexit is now proving useful in managing the government's calamitous COVID strategy. Among the government's many gambits for deflecting blame in between the lies, scapegoating and occasional snarls of menace, when questioned too closely, a sinister implication has begun to linger. It whispers, why don't our critics love this country? So this is an article from The Guardian. And uh, that will not be mentioned in your question. So you'll have to identify uh, what, is the, uh, what is likely the source of the passage. It's not necessary, but it helps, certainly helps. So target audience, source, nature, academic level, whether it's from a journal, whether it's from a pop sci outlet, whether it's from a general newspaper, a magazine, a specialist magazine, that all helps a lot. But let us just, uh, what from based on my initial reading of the passage, this is, this is this passage talks about patriotism and you just don't need to identify the subject. You need to identify the side of the argument, whether it endorses one side, whether it endorses the other side, whether it endorses both sides, considers both sides or endorses one aspect of one side and the other aspect of the opposing side. So you have to identify that you know, the motion of the passage, right? Or the motions of each paragraph rather, right? So you have to identify those key <clears throat> ideas and direction of those ideas the magnitude overall rough magnitude and direction so from this i know that this is a critique of uh, patriotism right this is a critique of uh, politicians exploiting patriotism and not taking responsibility so this is about that so now let us try to uh, now that we have it now we don't need to read this question in depth and we can uh, we don't need to read the passage in depth right now let's go to the uh, questions and then visit the passage again right so let us see the question first. Which of the following statements is the author most likely to agree with? So yeah, critics of the government do not do enough for the country. Emphatic patriotism is not unhealthy for a democracy. Patriotism always finds the same expression across time and place. The incumbent leaders tend not to take responsibility for their actions. So the most important things that you need to do is to read the options first. So what some people do is they read the passage. We get back to the question. They go back to the passage they get back to the question and read the first option they go back to the passage return to the question to read the second option go back to the passage return and so on and so forth that approach is not very time efficient while reading the passage initially i picked up certain keywords i picked up certain words that helped me anchor to the passage and also solve some questions very basic questions very quickly and when I return to the passage, these anchor points, these uh, tags shall serve as anchor points so that I can quickly sort and search, sift through the passage very easily. So now uh, I'll just tell you how to make the initial read. So when you're making the initial read, you need to identify the key ideas. So I identified that this passage doesn't say that all patriotism is bad, but it says that patriotism when invoked by a country's elite is bad, right? This is a key idea. Then the idea is that uh, the arguments used in Brexit, the arguments used in Brexit were one of patriotic intimidation. And the same arguments are being used to intimidate and uh, assert the government's strategy in its, uh, in its failed COVID strategy 
and defend the same. So that is uh, another argument there. And uh, now turning a section of public against its own judiciary and even elected representatives. This is another key idea, right? And then the final idea is that you attack your critics as and blame the critics for inaction. So deflecting blame, something that is mentioned here, that is also a key idea. So I have this anchor points. I have these anchor points. So I'll just clear them. I'll show you. I basically know that when I return to the passage, I have to look here, right? And then I have to look certainly here. And then I have to look here. I have to look here. And I have to look here. So these are my five anchor points. So that I, I just need to keep it in my mind. So I'll just uh, return to the passage and then get back. So I return to the questions and then get back to the passage. So, okay. Now what I do, I do the same for the options. I pick up one word from each option and then go back so I can check all of them at once. So this is critics of the government not doing enough for the country. If you remember, this was one of our anchor points. Emphatic patriotism is not unhealthy for a democracy. The very introduction of the passage. Again, important. Patriotism always finds the same expression across time and space. There's something specific, very specific, that I've not seen in the passage. So I remember it particularly. Uh, the incumbent leaders tend not to take responsibility for their actions. This is also something that I marked as an anchor point. So my three anchor points are there. One is very specific. Patriotism always finds the same expression across time and space. So I'll just mark certain points in the options so that I don't need to remember them whole. So I'll see if it's about critics. I'll see if it's about health of democracy. Critics unhealthy. I just remember it like that. Critics unhealthy. Same expression. Same, I just remember same. And I remember responsibility, very important. Responsibility for their actions. So I take these four, critics unhealthy, same, and responsibility. So I just remember them, critics unhealthy, same, responsibility. So I just go back, I revisit the passage. Critics unhealthy, same, responsibility. So I'll just go back to the passage and I'll see if I can find it. So first of all, Critics, yeah, definitely, uh, the, uh, these ask uh, the conservatives, the government, the people in the government, the current leaders in Britain, British government, they ask that, why don't our critics love this country? So they are not ready to take the blame. And if uh, they equate criticizing them, criticizing the government to criticizing the country in general, and then they accuse the opposition of criticizing and not doing anything and not like and not loving their country. Right, but they, uh, the opposition is only criticizing the government's action. And that is something that shows that they actually love their country. But the conservatives try to manipulate this narrative and show that attacking the government is equal to equivalent to attacking the country itself. Like if I'm criticizing the current ruling political party of Britain, I'm attacking Britain as a nation, as a culture. So that's what conservatives all over the world do with their respective nations. So that's one idea. So that is sorted. Now, uh, so definitely uh, the author will likely not agree with that because it's the contrary and arg argument is mentioned in the passage. Consider this rule of thumb. The more that patriotism is invoked, the more that patriotism is invoked, the more direct proportionality, uh, inverse proportionality, sorry. The more the patriotism is invoked, the less healthy the political culture will be. So the question asked about unhealthiness, right? So uh, if there is more patriotism, there will be unhealthiness. So that I know. Right. And then there was something regarding same, things being same everywhere. Right. So now that is a tricky one. So I'll uh, just search if there is something like that. But let me first eliminate the other options. Let me just check the fourth option first, because the third option is very difficult to find. Right. So now see. Now there is a, a thing that uh, the conservative government is well positioned to play the game. Uh, it is already high on the fumes of Brexit. Now, these things are pretty much, uh, they might be contributors, but they're irrelevant. So I just return to the passage and quickly eliminate the options that I can. So if I uh, just uh, mark this here, critics of the government do not do enough. So see, the author is likely to agree with critics of the government do not do enough for the country. So the author is saying that this is not said by the author, that critics of the government are not doing enough for the country. If anything, a similar statement that critics of the government do not like the country not exactly what is option A, but similar, is being said by the conservative government, the government in power, which the author is criticizing, right? 
so you don't assume that the author is on the side of critics just because he is also criticizing the government he is not on the side of opposition necessarily but definitely he is not with the government and he is not against the critics if not with them so this is not the view of the author this is the view of the conservative government whom the author is actually criticizing so this is definitely not something that the author would agree with almost opposite emphatic patriotism is not unhealthy for a democracy emphatic patriotism is not unhealthy for a democracy now if you are not eagle eyed you might miss this not and this will be critical if you read it as emphatic patriotism is unhealthy for a democracy yes that's what the author says word by word almost word by word in uh, the introductory part of the passage but the fact of the matter is that uh, this the author is actually saying not right the author is actually saying not that changes the equation so if you look emphatic patriotism is not unhealthy so you cancel this negative not with this un so you get emphatic patriotism is healthy for a democracy no the author is criticizing patriotism not to emphatic patriotism so a lot of excessive patriotism is healthy for a democracy no that's what the author is saying uh, that's what the author is saying that it's wrong it's not correct so the author is saying that uh, emphatic patriotism is unhealthy not healthy so not an uncancel and we get healthy and this is wrong so this is wrong patriotism always finds the same expression across time and space so we need to verify this proposition so i'll mark it with a question mark the incumbent leaders tend not to take responsibility for their actions so now uh, taking responsibility as i said in the passage it's mentioned the incumbent leaders tend not to take responsibility for their actions that is true that's what they, it's being said here if you look at the passage if you just go back to the passage once we can see this you can see this uh, clearly here if you look you can see this here uh, among the government's many gambits for deflecting blame deflecting blame is precisely not taking responsibility for one's actions right so the government formulated a covid strategy and it failed and now the government is blaming the critics the opposition the opposition political parties for criticizing them right so the government doesn't own up to its wrong actions or a mistakes on its part so certainly d is correct but let us rule not rule out c yet so let us see patriotism always finds the same expression across time and space so let's get back and check here if you can see it says that from mccarthyism in the us so place us is a place uh, china is a place chinese cultural revolution and mccarthyism so these are from two different times close uh, almost close times but different times so these two are uh, it says that these two are same so you might be tempted to think that option c is correct it finds the same expression but if you look here uh, and in post brexit pandemic britain we have developed post brexit this specifies the time and britain this specifies the place so in post pandemic uh, britain we have developed our own grammar of own our own this is the critical word here own so we have created a specific brand of patriotism so while the author says that patriots everywhere use the same basic strategy whether it be mccarthyism in the us the chinese cultural revolution or brexit in britain or covid strategy in britain different times different places or the same place same strategy base same basic strategy but the expression is unique because there is uh, there is always a new way of saying the old thing so this says that politicians all use they are common in using patriotism but they exploit patriotism in different ways depending on their convenience depending on their opportunism so as suits the opportunity so because of this own i can be pretty sure that this option this c Uh, i'll just get back to it and this is most likely wrong and since d was already correct and d had arguments in its favor well c didn't this is ruled out and d is correct this is the correct option now let's move on to the second question which of the following if true most weakens the author's main argument so most often you read the question and you just you'll just read it like which of the following weakens the author's argument that's the human tendency skipping words while scanning but you should you need to this word is very crucial main argument this is not asking if it weakens the author's side arguments or it weakens the author's other arguments and this will often be a this will often serve as a trap if you look at it that way so if you can see uh if you can see there are a number of options here there are a number of options here and some options will basically be based on side arguments so let us just see the first option So yeah, this uh, C, this option you needn't even verify this proposition since it's based on McCarthyism, and McCarthyism is something that's being mentioned here. If you look, McCarthyism is mentioned here, and uh, you might be tempted to think that 
since McCarthyism, the author criticizes McCarthyism, saying that McCarthyism in the U.S. is a kind of an it's an example of how uh, this uh, patriotism has been used as a pretext for persecution and submission. So, if McCarthyism didn't lead to any deaths, then that is not an example of persecution, right? So, let us see if that is uh, on how many fronts that is correct or wrong. Let us try to ascertain that. First of all, you don't need even need to ascertain that since you know that McCarthyism is a side idea. It's an example being quoted in the introduction of the passage. It's not the main idea of the passage. It's, uh, it, it won't even find a place in the summary of the passage. So it's an idea, let alone McCarthyism. So this is just something that is uh, not uh, relevant. So even if it is true, this is wrong because if the idea itself is trivial, whether it being correct or whether it being wrong, is of little substance, but still let us check it. Then directly cause. So even if this was a main idea, even if this was not an indirect idea, so McCarthyism directly causing citizen deaths is not that significant. Since direct, uh, since McCarthyism could have caused indirect deaths, right? And it could have caused deaths of people other than citizens. And uh, causing deaths is not the only way of persecuting people and submitting people. You can uh, submit a large number of people without killing them or without uh, harming them, right? So that is uh, one of the things that there is. So that is a critical idea here. So let us just... Now, McCarthyism. So see, this is wrong on four fronts. First of all, even if everything were correct, which is clearly not the case here, this argument would still not have been uh, something that attacks the author's main argument since it only attacks a very specific example Away of a part of the argument. So, not very relevant. And even then, it is not correct. Since McCarthyism can cause indirect deaths and still be an example of persecution, and it can cause deaths of citizens other than people other than citizens of the country and still be an example of persecution, and it cannot even cause death and still be an example of persecution by torture, deprivation, economic deprivation, social discrimination. So, yeah. Pretty much. So you don't need to go into all these details. You just see it's very specific. And here's the critical word mean. That's why it's important to read the questions and not skip them, see, thinking that each question would have the same text copy pasted. That's often not the case. So this is eliminated anyhow. Let's get back to question um, uh, option number two. An opposition MP hailed Britain as the greatest country in the world. Now, an opposition MP hailing Britain as the greatest country in the world certainly goes against the idea in the passage. But if you look at the word, it asks for most weakens. This doesn't most weaken. And maybe it most weakens if we can check the other two options, right? So we haven't done that. So we are not pretty sure of this. And again, if you look, it's very specific and it's kind of sidetracking. It's part of the argument, but it's kind of sidetracking as well. So the argument was that conservative MPs and conservatives in general and people who invoke patriotism in general these people, by invoking patriotism, lower the quality of democracy in a country and they deflect their responsibility by uh, criticizing, by equating their criticism levied upon them as criticism upon the country itself. So that is not exactly what's being conveyed here, although this is relative. So we'll not rule this out yet. This is a decently convincing contender for now. Now, let us, these two options are pretty long. So let me, let me just get back to the passage and try to explain you how to find the main idea of the passage. Reminded that this is not something to be done in the, in the exam, but I'm doing this for tutological purposes, just to teach you how that is done or how, tell you what a paragraph means. So this enlightenment is not something that is needed in the exam, but since this is a teaching session, I'll just tell you that. So let's go back and see if we can figure it out what the passage is saying, since it's a very short passage. So yeah, first of all, there are certain critical things that you need to, that you don't exactly need to know, but if you know, it helps, but without even knowing them, you can solve them. Now, see, there is this thing that Brexit, if you know what Brexit is, if you read newspapers and are updated with current affairs from the past few years, and especially from the past few months, uh, you need both of them, but this from the past few years. So you know that uh, the conservatives in Britain the nationalists, the patriots, the right-wing government, the conservatives, the part, conservative party, they voted, uh, they uh, organized a referendum to decide whether Britain should leave the European Union or not. So European Union is a set of nations, set of European nations that strives to bring Europe to an economic and social equality. 
Now, the nationalists hail Britain as uh, a distinct cultural entity, and they think that joining the European Union, uh, being staying in the European Union, is depriving Britain of its superiority. Like the, their view is that Britain is a powerful nation; it's a great nation, and by associating itself with other average and lower European nations, what they deem as lower inferior european nations britain's progress is being held back its high higher potential is being held back and since european union is somewhere where everyone has to pool they are arguing that since britain is great it has to give more and lesser countries which work less hard which are less talented less meritorious they are uh, exp they are since they are lower than the average and everyone gets the average they are getting more and britain is losing while they are gaining the lower ones are gaining while the higher ones in their view britain is losing so that's why in order to have a distinct cultural identity and in order to you know, show that we can have more economic growth without this cooperation thing we can have more economic growth alone and cooperation is actually holding us back and being advantageous for lower countries which are leeching off our resources so feeding on our uh, you know breadcrumbs so that uh, hateful view is being propagated by the right wing government in britain so uh, uh, on that pretext, uh, the right-wing government in Britain uh, is, you know, hailing the view that Britain has always been the greatest nation in the world, and we, that's why we should leave and have our own identity. So that is what Brexit is all about. So if you know this context, this passage becomes very easy. Although you don't need it, it's not essential. It's not necessary. Now there are there is mention of Tories. So if you know something about British politics, you would know what Tories are. Now that that's also something that's not essential. Vanquish Europe. If you look at this passage, there could be a question asking, what does vanquish Europe mean? And if you go by conventional logic, you would think that Britain uh, wanted to, you know, invade Europe and destroy Europe. But that's not what this means. Vanquish Europe means vanquishing the voluntary organization of European nations that carries with it certain obligations. So vanquish Europe is actually a metonymy or a synecdoche, a synecdoche for, uh, you know, a European Union. So Europe here is a metonymy for European Union in general, in specific rather, in specific. So uh, vanquish Europe doesn't literally mean that you, the Britishes want to destroy Europe. It simply means that they want to disband the European Union. Uh, so that is one thing. Vote leave veterans in number 10. Now these are some things that you uh, get with your, uh, you know, uh, cultural upbringing. So any Britain would know what number 10 means, but people from other countries would likely not know what number 10 means because it's not their native, uh, that's not something they use in their native uh, speak uh, speech, even English speakers from other countries. So number 10 is actually 10 Downing Street, the residence of the British Prime Minister. So this is where the British Prime Minister, uh, the uh, the elected head uh, resides. This is his home. So the vote uh, leave veterans in number 10. So that street where the leaders, the ruling party, uh, the ruling party's leaders live is number 10. So the vote leave veterans in London, number 10 in London uh, live. So that is uh, uh, representative of the ruling party. So number 10 is actually a stand-in. Uh, you can call it uh, again a metonymy for uh, the ruling party, of the ruling government of Britain. So that is, uh, again, a cultural uh, thing that if you know that helps you a lot, that gives you an unfair advantage over the others. But that's not something you should strive to know for, especially if you don't have much time left for the exam. But if you're giving, uh, if you're doing general reading, you would know these things. It's fine. You just read a good number of high quality newspapers and that will suffice. So that is one thing. Now, uh, if you know, uh, our government, uh, British government had a terrible COVID strategy in which without due research and without due analysis, they took one very specific scientific view and just said that, okay, we need herd immunity. And for herd immunity, we are not going to impose any kind of a lockdown. We'll just let uh, the dying of 10% uh, uh, of Britain's population is inevitable. And if 10% of 5% uh, to 10% of Britain dies, and then everything will be fine. Old pe most of them will be old people and we, we are helpless. So we'll just let people die. We'll not uh, hold back the economy. So we can save the economy and this is something inevitable. So that fatalistic notion was propagated. So this was something that Britain took back after, uh, after several weeks. But that was something that caused a lot of harm initially. And the, the way they managed their national health system was terrible. So Brit Britain was one of the classical cases of worst the perhaps ugliest mismanagement of the COVID crisis in Europe, all of Europe, if not in uh, even a bigger part of the world. So yeah, that's one thing.
and uh, this is this pretty much what i wanted to explain so now we can go back to the passage and see uh, without using these facts that i told you these were just to interest you we can go back and solve it without knowing these facts so yeah let's go back okay now let us try to solve this uh, mccarthyism didn't directly cause citizen deaths we had already ruled this out an opposition mp this we had marked with a question mark let's see what the other options are the conservative government presented factually sound arguments and scientifically endorsed statistics factually sound arguments this is something that that is very important this makes anything uh, any uh, argument solid and scientifically endorsed statistics again something solid keep watching out whether you get a not or some word like but and those words that that are very tricky showing how its covid-19 strategy had saved millions of lives which would have otherwise have been lost a very strong option that clearly says that the conservative government so we have to assume that if true if this is true if the conservative government which it didn't but if it had presented factually sound arguments showing that its covid strategy had succeeded how is that succeeded if it had saved millions of lives and clearly it's written which would otherwise have been lost so maybe you know if they have shown that they have saved millions of lives but if the other party could show that taking another approach could have saved uh, could have saved uh, maybe 10 million uh, tens of millions of lives right so then doesn't it's a, a relative loss absolute gain but a relative loss but there's shown that which otherwise would have been lost so this is a very strong argument this seems to be the correct answer since uh, the author in the passage argues that the conservative government is actually deflecting the blame for its uh, calamitous covid strategy we just read that in the passage right so it says that it had terrible covid strategy conservative government it's not even taking the blame for it up front but uh, not uh, you know Uh, not humaning up to its consequences, but uh, if you can look here, it says that this argument is precisely what would weaken the author's argument the most. So this is the most likely the correct answer. Let us just not jump the uh, you know due procedure. Let's not jump the gun, and let's check if option four is correct or wrong. If or maybe option four is more correct than option three, we don't know yet. Social scientists and psychologists, again very credentialed people, high credence uh, people, just maybe just next to scientists. contend that the kind of arguments and campaigning done in favor of the brexit is markedly different from those put forth in defense of the government's covid strategy seems complicated basically what the option is saying that experts just substitute words don't go with experts contend experts say experts say that the arguments in favor of brexit are, that is that the government is putting to support brexit is different from the arguments that is being put in defense of covid strategy now if you remember the passage was saying i had marked an anchor point there in the passage if you remember i had marked an anchor point there so if you uh, remember that i'll just all right so uh, when we look here among the government's many gambits for deflecting blame so we can certainly see among the government's many gambits for deflecting blame so what is clear here is that uh, if you look back at the option if you look at the if you look back at the option social scientists and psychologists contend that the kind of arguments and campaigning done in favor of the brexit is markedly different for, from those put forth in defense of the government's covid strategy so we simply need to identify whether the government's uh, arguments for deflecting blame in the covid strategy and in uh, you know its brexit strategy are different or similar so if we look uh this is exactly what said the kind the kind similar kind the kind of war talk that helped secure brexit is now proving useful in managing the government's calamitous covid strategy is this is the same thing singular the kind of war talk used in brexit is also being used in covid strategy as the same there the uh, same kind the uh, same kind is being used so what we can rule out is and uh, what we can rule out from here is that uh, uh, okay so see uh, now uh this will certainly weaken the author's argument since it says that it is markedly different and there we find that the passage says that they should be the same like they are the same right but again that uh, see this is there is this most weakens there is this most weakens and then there is main argument so again this is talking of something trivial that is not the that is a trivial aspect of the important point right it's not an important aspect of the important point it's not the core aspect of the important point it's a trivial aspect of the important point but even if even if suppose this, this is true and uh, maybe uh, see if it is written if true so let us assume this is true and the strategy and the kind of patriotism being used in brexit and the kind of patriotic uh, intimidation being used in 
uh, government's COVID strategy. Those are two different kinds. But again, they are the same. They are the patriotic intimidation. They are also both different kinds of the same patriotic intimidation. And the core argument of the passage is that patriotic intimidation is something bad for democracy. Right. So irresponsibility is always there. So four is, again, uh, I'll say question mark, but not the best. And since we had double favor, double arguments, multiple things in its favor, and again, this is also wrong since it's very uh, not very strong. Uh, it's it's correct, but it's not part of the main argument. This is also correct, but not part of the main argument. So this is something that is absolutely correct. It is flawless, completely flawless, immaculate, impeccable. So three is the correct option. So that is how we solve it. Thank you. Hope to see you again.